Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Time Pass with the New Indian Express. I have with me the extraordinary Rajkumar Rao, who changes his appearance, his characteristics. I know it's called acting, but we don't normally see such fine acting on uh, Indian screen. So it's a pleasure for me to welcome someone I've admired for a very long time. Uh, Rajkumar Rao, uh, I'm so delighted to welcome you. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm in good. Chandigarh. A bubble we're about to start a shoot on 30th okay i'm just in my lock and and you're in that space where you're prepping for a new role uh, yeah. i know you take it really seriously <laughs> can you talk a little about what you're doing uh, what, what the next film is we still have to title it it's not titled yet it's a film uh, which is being directed by uh, abhishek jain it's his first hindi film he's made right. a film called they are in uh, in gujarati language right and this is a film which has me, Kriti Sanan, uh, Parish, Parish sir, uh, Ratna ji, Ratna Patekshah ji. Wow, what a terrific combination of people. And you've worked with, I think, all of them at some point or the other. Not I think with minus, Parish. minus Ratna ji. Parish yeah. sir, I worked in Made in China. In Made in China. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But so, with Ratna ji, yeah, no. yeah. So, uh, Rajkumar, it's quite extraordinary how you change, uh, um, you know, with every film. And... Um, uh, you know, it could be the slightest thing. For instance, when Newton, you know, the blink or the hairdo, uh, but it makes such a difference. So, you know, when a role comes to you, what is it that you decide, okay, this is what I want to do for this. And this is what is exciting me. Uh, so what, what gets me excited is the story overall, right. uh, you know, the script overall. And if, uh, if it's a character then, uh, which is amazing, like in Bareilly, I love the story, but then I saw Pritam Vidroi, I thought it, you know, there's so much scope as an actor for me to do. Yeah. You know, I, I really uh, could enjoy so much, you know, playing this character with two you know, dual personalities. So sometimes it's the story, sometimes it's story and the character. Uh, like with Newton, I love the simplicity of Newton. I love the, the sincerity and the honesty with which they wrote the script. And then when I come on board, I, I try and I try and bring in you know, some of my own elements that you just give an example of Newton that with the hair, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, blinking in the eyes, just to make it exciting for me as an actor, you know, otherwise just, just keep doing the same thing gets very really monotonous after a point. I don't think anyone can accuse you of monotony. I think every, every role that you do is so extraordinary. Talk yeah. a little about Ludo and Chalang because we're seeing both films almost yeah. back to back and it's, very exciting, I think, for you, although they were supposed yep. to be released earlier, but uh, yeah. now to sort of come into the public domain again after this enormous lockdown, um, what's it like uh, uh, again to be with audiences? I am very excited uh, for both the films. Both the films uh, are, are very different, different yeah. genres. One is a crime comedy, which is Ludo, and one is a, one is a sports drama comedy, which is Chalang. And playing two different parts all together, coming from two different backgrounds. Uh, they look different, they talk differently. So I'm excited. I think it will be uh, fun to see like one day people are watching Dodo, next day they're watching the same actor doing different things. So I'm excited for, for that part uh, uh, to witness. Uh, they're coming together also like, I, I didn't want these films to come together of course at the same time because yeah. I thought you know, to enjoy one and then after a gap, maybe the other one can come. Uh, but both are very special to me. Like Chalang is directed by Hansel Mehta and, yeah. Hansel Sir and written and produced by Love Sir. These are the people I really admire and I really like their work, their writing. And uh, Basu, of course, Anurag Basu, our dada. He is. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, playing this really, it, I was really playing out of the crease in Ludo. <laughs> I, I was not in the defense mode. I was just hitting every, I was just trying to hit the ball. So I've, I've gone full on in Ludo. Right. And I've given, I've given it my everything. This is the first time I'm trying something very, very physical huh. uh, with my ball. Like, there's a lot of physical comedy in it. No, even from the trailer, you know, the way you're announcing the dishes, <laughs> it's hilarious. You have to wait for the introduction of my character. Okay. It's a one-minute monologue where I'm just reciting food items. It's <laughs> like a menu. And dancing like Mithunda. I think, yeah. <laughs> And, and the hairdo and everything is sort of very it is uh, like full disco. <laughs> <laughs> so did you model it on Mitsunda or uh, what? I did. <laughs> it was just it just happened because uh, you know we were doing our look tests, different look tests because we I want to like both of us wanted to give this character a certain look. 
and we were trying different patches of hair patches and then we tried this one and then dada said are ye to mithun lag raha hai tu <laughs> we thought ki why not you yeah. know let's paste this character on mithun da and dada is such that if you give him ideas he's very open to it then he just changed the whole character and the background and it he just made it so easy for me yeah in a way it's like the other part of pritam with johi you know all out and you know <laughs> completely in yeah. nuts. uh yeah. which which i think um, you know people really get you know and uh, uh, how how often have you been called pritam with johi when you you right. go out and yeah. meet people a lot I, someone told me there are groups on social media as called Pritam Vidrohi. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, what about Chalang? Because again, it's um, again quite a physical role. You know, yeah. you're a coach, and uh, uh, yet uh, you know you have this obvious crush on this teacher and your uh, yeah. competitor is Zishan. Uh, how was it playing that? It was it was great fun because Chalang is is set in Haryana, the story which is my home ground. Right. And- I am very much familiar with this world with these characters so I uh I I knew the language uh, but it I'm out of practice for a couple of years now so I had to go through to my you know uh, initial days and talk to my family members and my extended cousins and just to hear them out uh, just to you know get just to get used to it again all over yeah. again and then to play this PT coach who's uh, so laid back and he doesn't understand <laughs> his responsibilities at all he's just yeah. doing it because he was supposed to do a job Yeah, and he just got this one. So I think it's it's very important for in in a way with this film we're also trying to tell you know everyone that how whatever you do in life, yeah, you have to do it in the right way because right. that is your responsibility. That is the job given to you, and if you don't do it right, something might get affected. Mm-hmm. So I think it is very important for people to understand, which I think in a way Newton was was also trying to say. Absolutely. But I was I just you know it's a it's a it's a first light hearted fun film that me and Hanthasar are doing together. Yeah. He is a very funny guy in real life. People <laughs> of course can't judge him with the kind of filmography he has, but he is a lot of fun. He's not he's not a serious guy. He's not a serious you know that you only talk about uh, serious issues. You can talk with him about that as well. But he has a funny side. which very beautifully came out in through this film in fact you know you talked about hansel and uh, he has often talked about how close both of you are as well and yeah. um, he is, he also talks to you about a lot of his problems yeah. he's often told me that you know whenever he had to share th- say a trauma that he was going through he would come to you and talk about it and you would just sort of hear each other out and yeah. you know, just just having a listening board you know Yeah, yeah. So, how important uh, is it for a young actor, uh, Rajkumar, to have an ecosystem of people around you, like Hansal, or um, even you know, in your personal life, to stay sane, to stay afloat, to be charged all the time? It is very important, especially I think this pandemic has taught us that you have to be nothing is permanent. Right. You you have to be. There have to be some. There has to be some people out there who you can count upon. Right. Who are there for you, uh, and uh, Hansal sir is definitely one of them. He is again. It's it same goes for me. If I if I'm ever in any situation, I think I would definitely call him, and uh, right. sure, he would always be there for me. Uh, but I think it is important to have friends. I have so many friends who are not from the film industry, mm. so it's important to be to keep that reality check. Mm. And also, I am somebody. I am someone who tries to portray reality on screen. Right. So I can't distance myself from from reality, because if you can't be real in real life, you can't portray reality on screen. Absolutely. You can't be that person. So I I talk to my friends about everything from right. film to about everything in the world that is happening. Right. So Rajkumar, you know when when I look back, it's been ten years in the industry for you. Uh, quite extraordinary, even in terms of the range and depth of the roles that you've done. um and beginning with uh, such a genre breaking movie like lsd i mean it was truly revolutionary at that time i remember when it came out we were stunned all of us you know what is this uh, um so talk a little about uh, going from there to uh, the kind of movies you're doing now do you feel uh, the hindi movie narrative has uh, progressed or has it regressed it has definitely progressed mm-hmm. uh, i think uh, And I think the credit goes to our audiences. They yeah. have definitely evolved. Mm. 
because they have now very easy access to all the things that are going on in the world. They have access to international cinema. They have access to French cinema, to Korean cinema. So now somewhere, I think they have, they did start expecting the same kind of content from us as well, from our right. industry as well. Right. That you know, look at that, what they are making, and yeah. you know, why can't we make such stories? Why can't we make such you know big films like like Bahu? Why can't we make Bahubali? Yeah. The worlds. So I think that's the reason I've, I think makers have also realized that now we have to push our boundaries. You know, we just can't keep selling the the project. We just can't keep selling the same story in a different package. Mm. So that's the reason I think new generation of filmmakers and writers, they are writing such heartland stories, stories uh, about characters uh, who was characters which are so relatable. You know, you feel like you know these people, you know this yeah. world, you become yeah. a part of that family, of that yeah. group. And all, I think our audiences also, they want, now want to see actors playing characters on screen mm. rather than playing them, themselves. Over so and that, over again. Yeah, I think that's the reason like most of actors like me and we are with me and like a lot of Aishman, uh, you know, Vicky, Ranveer, so many, Ranveer, Karthik. We're trying to, we're trying to slowly, you know, push that boundary and trying to explore it even further. How important is it for you to have the kind of writers and directors whose uh, vision matches yours? Do you have enough of these? As of, I think fortunately, whoever I worked with till date, we have always been on the same same page. Mm. I think we knew the reason why we were making that film. Uh, we were making it because we wanted to tell that story very sincerely and not because nobody was aiming that, you know, let's do this because it sells. Mm. That thing has never come up as of now in my career. Nobody has told me that, you know, sorry, it's a book. Like, how do you know it's a book? I think we were very sure the kind of films uh, that we wanted to make. It was about being really honest to the the writing material, to the given material. And that's what we always do. And as I said, in my case, I've been very fortunate that the kind of directors I've worked with, yeah. uh, they, had, they have that kind of trust in me. But, um, you know, so many things also don't work out sometimes, Rajkumar. You know, you have a project or you have a film that's so exciting, you want to jump into it right away, then it doesn't happen say NH10, which was supposed to happen with you and Frida. How heartbreaking is that for an actor? Everything seems perfect, the story is lovely, and then it doesn't happen. No, I don't I don't take it to my heart. Yeah? I'm a very positive person. How I'm are you so positive? You have to explain the secret of because that. My blood group is be positive. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, it it's fine. These are these are small things in life. You yeah. move on. You can't right. look at the past and just keep thinking about that. Right. Of course, for that couple of, maybe for that moment, you feel a little, Are, why? Yeah. So move on. You can't really sit there and keep thinking about that. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, talk a little about the work you're doing now. There's Badhai Do, there's White Tiger, which seems very exciting. I think you've worked with Rehman Bairami, who's, I think, one of the yeah. finest directors in the world. Yeah. How, was, how was that uh, uh, for you? It was so exciting to work with Ramin. Uh, I just saw one of his films till we started shooting. And then I was, you know, shooting for something. And I told my director friend that, you know, I'm doing this film, The White Tiger, and Ramin is directing. And he got so excited because he was a fan. He's someone who saw all his films, all his work. Right. And I said, wow, you, do you have any idea you're working with Ramin Bahrani? Right. Like, uh, yeah, I, I've seen his film. I like his work. He's a great guy. I've spoken yeah. with him. He's like, no, you will have so much fun. Right. And that's exactly what happened. You know, Ramin, he is, he is so passionate about what he does. And he is, and he loves his actors. Which right. is, I think, a good thing for me, right. for us. Because he, right. and he would give you that space. For him, it's not only about, let's just finish the scene quickly, or let's just move on to the next location. For him, it's about, you know, take your own time. He doesn't even say action. For right. him, it is like, whenever you're ready. Really? Yeah, he doesn't say action. Okay. It's like roll camera rolling and then he says, whenever you're ready. So <laughs> does you, he you call cut have... or does he not call cut also? He takes some time. But yeah, <laughs> but that's what something which Hansa Sir also does. And a lot of directors like Dada also does. Right. Like they, they don't, uh, Mutwani actually, I worked with him and Anurag. So many people, they do that. They have that process where it's like about, you know, let it roll. Because now also it's digital. So right. you don't have the have to worry about the right. talk, which is just rolling. Yeah. 
so now i think it is it is that kind of thing where sometimes you get such some magic hmm. which was not there in the scene but if you don't say cut sometimes you get that magic right but um, you know some of your roles like ometa and uh, even shahid have been physically so demanding you know they uh, it's not just of course uh, changing your physicality but also yeah. some of the brutality that you face uh, on screen and some that you inflict uh, how does it affect you as an actor as a human being i like it <laughs> i like i like i like uh, you know getting tired while working right i feel like ha uh, when i come back to my to my house i feel like kuch hua aaj you know i i feel tired something has happened today right uh and it depends it totally depends on the characters like with omar it is it was with omar and shahid both actually it was yeah you're right it's physically and mentally yeah. taxing they're so not easy taxing. Taxing. yeah very very taxing but i i like i like going in that space right i like, like putting myself in that spot where i i don't think about anything i just you have to be i just like getting very deeply involved with my character psyche especially hmm. because for me it's mostly about what's happening inside more than what's happening outside hmm. because what you feel what you think is what you do right yeah so for my action my action comes from within right uh rajkumar i also once observed you very closely when uh, uh, we were having a conversation with nasir saab and ratna patak shah you were sitting there uh, i think it was a couple of hours long you were so observant and you listened so closely and you hardly talked you know you were just yeah. observing you were listening you were sort of taking it in that's a very rare uh, quality in an actor they usually like to be the center of uh, uh, yeah. attraction so how uh, how is uh, how have you made yourself so uh, calm and uh, you know so able to receive things which is i suppose a quality that makes you a great actor but how have you worked on yourself thank you uh, i love these people yeah you know they are they are people you look up to in life and then when you get a chance to just to listen to them right don't interrupt you know <laughs> as as buddha said be a listener be a good listener right because you never know what you're going to get if you keep interrupting so i am a also i i am a student of acting right so when i and that happens with everyone like when i uh, i spent a good amount of time with irfan sir at one a couple of times actually and i just i just loved listening to him i loved listening to irfan sir right. you know when sir ian mcellen came uh, and i think amir sir was the moderator i just want to know their experience i want to know how they prepare i want to know what's their process mm. how they decide upon a character or a script so for me it's about learning for me it's about what new can i learn today from these people that can make me a better artist right not about being the star of the show and being the one to tell people this is what my craft is or this no, is no i honestly you know i've never said this but i generally i genuinely don't like talking about myself <laughs> i genuinely don't like it but it's such an interesting uh, uh, life i mean you know a little boy growing up in uh, gurgaon uh, comes to delhi comes to uh, uh, college uh, does theater goes to fti and has always known that he wants to be an actor right yeah i think uh, i think that was just a just a thing that happened i think some i'm i feel i feel i'm i'm god child i think i i i i sincerely believe that and i think universe had this is planned for me and you know i i would have come to mumbai directly after doing theater in delhi for 3 years right. but i wanted to i wanted to learn i wanted to be more prepared so that once i go i i decided once i come to mumbai i should not feel like maybe i should have you know done some more theater or done some more plays or right. learn some more right. of course the learning is a never ending process you keep learning with every film as well but right. i wanted to be just i wanted to invest so much of time in learning and right. getting trained as an actor yeah because you never know once you get into the whole process uh, how much time will you ever have you know True. so how but you've been working almost back to back uh, rajkumar so uh, sometimes you need to take a breather as well don't you or do you just like to plunge into something straight away after doing something uh, taxing especially covid 19 gave me a break oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think all 
why breaks have just come together in these nine months. <laughs> what have you been doing? How have you been handling yourself? Not bad, not bad. I I, I was trying to be productive. I was trying to read. I, I read a lot. I, I I watched. I watched a lot of things on OTDs, different okay. OTD platforms, and I I attended so many online workshops on yeah. action, on like yeah. screen writing, okay. on on direction sometimes. So I was doing. I was attending a lot of online workshops. Right. I was doing that. Okay. So uh, was that useful? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's like going back to your basics, you know, because after ten years of being of being a working actor, sometimes you just have to pause and then revise everything all over again. And this lockdown gave me that opportunity. Right. You know, I, I attended from like so many actors, Kevin Spacey. Uh, uh, Natalie Portman, uh, Aaron Sorkin's screenplay writing workshop, Helen Mirren, um, and and of course I'm forgetting some names now. But yeah, yeah, okay. it did so really. Is, help. is there is there a future that you look at where you want to be a writer or you want to be a director as well? The writer, I think writing is a very patient job. Uh -huh. I have so many ideas in my head, right? But just to sit and write those screenplays is is a is a tough job. <laughs> so I think my respect for writers have gone so many notches higher. I tried. I tried writing. I tried. I wrote a couple of pages. I had some stories in my mind, but then I I, I could not. I could not finish. <laughs> <laughs> I have to I think hire a professional writer now. Yeah, but that is something that you could look at as well. Uh, collaborating on projects or on movies that you know you have the story of which you've uh, originated that could happen as well. Yeah, that could that could. I think that's that's the the bigger plan that you know there are so many ideas I have in my head as I said, right. and I would want those ideas to come alive to be in a script format, and if it excites us, then maybe uh, we would love to make them. Right. So what is your spiritual uh, practice? Uh, you know, uh, there has to be something because otherwise uh, the calm and the, the, the sort of um, the serenity that you have, I mean, it cannot come out of not actually working on yourself. So how have you done that, uh, Rajkumar? Well, I am a very spiritual and a very religious guy. Uh, and I believe in everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I do read. I do read. Uh, I watch a lot of documentaries of some great scholars. Okay. I read books uh, about some great yogis. And uh, it's important. I think it's important to find that center point and mm. to you know, focus on that. Mm. So I, I, and especially in this pandemic, I think in this lockdown, right. uh, I did that a lot. Yeah. From Maha, Mahavtar Babaji to, you know, to Paramhansa, right. to Neeta Baba. Yeah. To Rumi, to Khalil Gibran, so many things. Yeah. Right. Of course, one could say that uh, in trapped, you were already practicing for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was that experience? Did Did you uh, remember some of your moments in trapped uh, during uh, this <laughs> lockdown? Uh, if I didn't, there are so many. There were so many people around me who did. Who did? <laughs> they were, People made so many memes and people yeah. used to send messages like, oh, so you always knew that this was about to happen, <laughs> so you were always prepared. Uh, but yeah, I can I can understand the feeling of, you know, luckily, like, I, I was feeling very, not bad, but yeah, worried for my friends who were staying all alone. Right. You yeah. know, it's not easy to just yeah. stay alone, all alone for eight, nine months. So I was, I was in touch with them that they're doing okay, if they need anything. Because at least I have, I had people around me, you know, so, but it's, yeah, so it, it can be tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rajpur, 10 years on, do you consider yourself an insider? Do you consider yourself an outsider? Touchy question in these days. <laughs> I'm an actor. Okay. I'm just an actor who got, uh, I think, who who's blessed and who's, yeah, I'm just an actor who's who's blessed. Who's looking for the next great part to uh, to yes, act? Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Ajkumar. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. And please continue the good work. And please continue being this very calm and serene person that we see off screen. So I think that's Thank very you. important as well. Uh, yes. To be a role model um, to young people, do they come to you? Do they ask you for advice? 
They do, they do. Yeah, a lot of people uh, ask me for advice that what should we do? We want to be actors, and I and I tell them that you know just work on your craft. Yeah. Just just get trained. It's it won't be easy. It won't be an easy ride. But if you're ready, if you think this is your calling, first of all, find out what is your calling. If you think, and find out why do you want to do it. Yeah. If you're doing it because you want to be famous, then that's not the right reason. Yeah. You should do it because you really love it. Because there's nothing else you can think about. apart from acting if you think that way then yeah you uh, please be on this journey work hard learn learn as much and then come to the city and there will be opportunities for you great wonderful thank you so much for talking to us rajkumar rao all the way best thanks a lot see you soon bye